What up, it's you for today's video. We'll be full baby Pokemon team. Six years ago, I did this team, and I thought it's probably time to give it a little revamp. So we got a lot of baby Pokemon here. What I did is I randomly picked six of these out with a random generator, and I put them on one team. I had some really, really good battles today. Now, also with content, people, if you do want to check me out on Twitch, this is where I do all my live streams and stuff. The link's in the description of the video. And I've got two battles today with a baby Pokemon team. Now, we should be getting almost back to near daily content from today onwards. I've uh, just had to rearrange my schedule and stuff, so we should be nearly back there from today. Okay, first battle, this is against uh, Chekasaurus, and also we're going to be doing some, a lot of these on Sword and Shield too. So the first Pokemon I got is uh, going to be Gibble, and I've got Tyrogue. So this Tyrogue set is max health and max attack Adam and nature. We've got the ability guts, we got high jump kick, fake out, facade, and thief. Thief's really the only way to hit ghosts. So I'm going to clap some cheeks on the gimbal, and I did pretty good damage, and I'm going to get my flame orb up, which is really, really nice. So now I can go for a high jump kick, which should easily take out the gimbal. Gibble's going to outspeed me, and it's going to set the stealth rock up. So that's a little bit annoying, but that's okay. Gibble should definitely go down to one high jump kick. High jump kick misses the gibble. You wouldn't read about it. So that's going to be a lot of crash damage from my four little Tyroke. Now, I was thinking, does this have any other coverage moves to hit me, or is it purely set up at the start? Uh, now the gibble is going to go for a round. It's a special set. I was like, okay, great. I can just leave this one on 17 health. And now the gibble is going to get a special attack rise because it's got the item throat spray. High jump kick misses twice in a row. Oh, man. It's a horror. Horrible, horrible start. It's an absolute disaster, people. So, Tyro is going to be fainting in a pool of salt. Next Pokemon here we got is a Wynut, and Wynut's going to take some Stealth Rock damage. So, let's have a look at this set. It's not really much you can do with it, right? We've got the you know, normal moves on it. So, I've got Quick Law and Why Not, because why not? Usually, that's just for getting like a Destiny Bond KO. Now, since I know that this Gibble is a special set, I went for a Mirror Coat here. Mirror Coat does very good damage, and that is enough to take out the Gibble. Probably only just there, because you now why not took that one pretty well. Now, the EV spread on this is max health, and I've got 164 in defense and 92 in special defense. And I've got Counter Destiny Bond, Mirror Coat, and Encore. So against this Gibble, I really wasn't sure what to do. I was like, it's, good. it's a full Gibble team, by the way. I was like, well, it might be a physical set. So let's go for counter. I was right, but I got flinched. I was like, oh, that really, really sucks. Now the Gibble's going to go for another bite here, and that is going to be the end of my Wynut. I would like to get a bit of damage to counter off, but uh, I don't think it would have taken it out, but it would have been handy. Next Pokemon I'm going to use is going to be the Bonsai. So this Bonsai set is... Uh, it's a pretty interesting set. So I've got Explosion, Counter, Flail, and Rock Slide. Max Attack and Max Speed, Adam and Nature. Now, I was thinking about this for a bit. I'm like, well, I've got Counter on this too, but maybe I should just go for a Flail. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for the Counter. So here comes the Bite from the Gibble. Does fairly good damage to me, I guess. Uh, counter is most certainly not going to take it out there. It's going to be about a three-hit KO. So I thought, well, I could go for another one. I don't know whether they got a setup move or maybe the Gibble will swap out. Let's go for a counter again, bro. So here comes the, uh, that was another bite from the uh, Gibble right there. It crits me and it flinched me on the same turn. Now, the item I've got on my Bonsai is a Custer Bro, which is going to make me one turn of priority. So I thought, well, against this Gibble, I've got to go for my strongest move possible to try and take it out because I believe none of my other moves are going to do the trick. So going for the explosion here and explosion is going to have a lot of base power. It's going to take my bonds layer. However, it's going to also take out the gibble as well. I could have gone for flail there, but I thought, well, it doesn't really matter what I go for because Bonsai is going to get outsped and take it out in the next turn. So I want to make sure that there's going to bury the Gibble, right? So out comes Gibble number three. Oh, wait, I've got to take a pee. And we got Mime Jr. coming out here. Now, this Mime Jr. set is a Trick Room set with Nasty Plot, Dream Eater, and Hypnosis. I've got the item Everlight and the ability uh, Filter. And I've got Max Health and I've got Max Special Attack, Quiet Nature, Zero IVs, and Speed. So this is a special Gibble. It's going to go for Earth Power. And it does actually a fair bit of damage to me which is interesting. And I'm going to set up the uh, Trick Room. So now I'm going to be going first. So I thought, well, I could Dynamax here, or I could go for Hypnosis and risk it. Hypnosis actually is pretty garbage. And I was hoping it would land, and it did land. It's like, great, this is awesome. Now I can go for a Dream Eater. And if I hit that Gibble, you know, I don't think I'm going to one-shot it, but it'll do a lot of damage because this thing's special attack isn't all that bad, you know, and I'll heal myself up at the same time. 
which should nearly get me back to full health, or, or close to full health, right? So I, I was thinking, well, this may even be a good opportunity to go for Nasty Plot too. So I ended up changing my mind and going for a Nasty Plot. However, the Gibble's going to swap out and Gibble uh, number four is going to come in. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't normally like putting the whole entire uh, opponent's team to sleep. I normally try and keep it to one Pokemon per sleep at one time. So I thought... I have to Dynamax here. And the good thing about Dynamax is I can use Max Mindstorm off Dream Edit too. Now, it's obviously been a while since uh, we, uh, we've done the Sword and Shield content. I did my first Sword and Shield uh, you know, video the last upload there. But uh, yeah, um, I, I guess BDSP did feel a little bit empty without a uh, actual main game mechanic in there. Not that I'm saying Dynamax is balanced or anything. It just felt a little bit empty without the, uh, you know, actual, uh, you know, different uh, battle mechanics. Say it'd be Mega Z moves or Dynamax, something like that. So go for the Max Mindstorm, and that is going to drop the Gibble and put the Psychic Terrain on the field. And it's going to make my Mime Jr. a pretty threatening Pokemon, too. Uh, so that's the end of Gibble number four. So we got got uh, two more Gibbles after that. And I was thinking here, well, if I was using a Gibble team or another Pokemon, right, and I had to face a Trick Room Pokemon with a Nasty Plot with Max Mindstorm up, I'd probably Dynamax my Pokemon and go for a Max Guard. So I was thinking uh, about this match. I was like, that's probably what they're going to do. And that'll be uh, stalling out the number of turns of Trick Room too, because Trick Room obviously doesn't last too long when you throw in, uh, you know, uh, Max Guard here and there and, you know, Dynamax, you know what I'm saying? So here we go. Dynamax Gibble. It's looking very, very fresh. And we got a Max Quake. So it's like, okay, no, uh, no prediction there. So it's going to go for Max Quake which was a smart move. It didn't do a lot of damage, but it actually made the uh, Gibble get a plus one in special defense. So I'm thinking right here, well, I don't think Max Mindstorm is going to be able to take this one out. It'll do a fair bit, and it did a really, really small amount of damage. So I'm thinking, well, okay, that was bulky. That was very, very bulky. So the Trick Room has run out too. I've got Max Mindstorm again. Is my opponent going to attack? However, it's going to go for a max guard this turn. So it's like, okay, that's a smart play because, you know, my mime's not going to be able to do any more damage to Gibble. Now, can I take another attack from the Gibble? That was something I was thinking about too. Or maybe I should save my mime for a little bit later on. That's what I was thinking. So I went into mime and I went, sorry, I went to Mantine. They both start with them, all right? Give me, give me a little bit there. So I went to Mantine, took some Stealth Rock damage and we got the max Quake. So that's great. So Mantine is my fifth Pokemon. Now, this is a special sweeping set. We've got on this one, uh, Modest Nature and Max Speed. We've got Rain Dance of Swift Swim, Hydro Pump, Air Slash, and Mud Slap. Mud Slap was actually quite good at hitting electric types because of that nasty uh, four times weakness. Okay, in comes the Sleeping Gibble. This is my chancy here. I thought about going for Rain Dance, but I thought, no, I'm just going to do some damage here. So the Hydro Pump is going to land on the Gibble, does very, very good damage, almost taken out. So it was very, very close. Uh, they got the Psychic Terrain disappearing too. So going for Air Slash here, and that is going to be the end of the Gibble. Um, I didn't want to go for Mud Slap because, <laughs> let's be real, I was a little bit worried that it wouldn't take it out. It's Mud Slap, right? Next Pokemon, well, it's a Gibble. Now, this is Gibble number six, I think. Yeah, this is Gibble number six. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for Hydro Pump here. I'm going to play no games. I'm going to get as much damage as possible. So firing off that Hydro Pump at the Gibble, uh, my item too. My item was Damp Rock to extend the duration of the Rain Dance. Uh, we had the Gibble going for a Stone Edge there. I almost went for Rain Dance. I'm very, very glad that I didn't because I would have got no damage on that gibble whatsoever. So bringing in my Mime Jr. I've got 39 health and I'm going to take Stealth Rock damage. I thought, let's see if this uh, gibble is like Bandit or Choice and now it's going to go for Earthquake. I'm like, okay, well that's fine. I feel like Mime Jr. was already, uh, you know, obviously going to be fainted anyway at some point. So it was good to see uh, maybe what item it had. So it doesn't have a Choice item. So we're going to go to Munchak, my very, very last Pokemon here. Now I've run this set a couple of times. We've got a Rest Leg Torque, classic uh, pit bike combination there with Curse. And this time I roll with Mega Kick. So we're going for a move that doesn't really have the greatest accuracy in the world, but it does have a lot of oomph when it hits right. So we got the ability Thick Fat and we got the item Everlight. I've got Max Health and Max Special Defense and I've got Sassy Nature. Now Mega Kick's got a lot of base power, but the accuracy of 75% is really, really shaky. So I gotta watch out. Now this is very, very interesting. So we got the Gibble swapping out and we're gonna go the uh, Gibble, 
number five, right? So I went for rest this turn because I simply took the attack so well. I thought, well, um, I can go for the rest here and I might even get like another curse up. Heck, I could get another attack up, right? The only thing I was worried about was getting rest, but I knew that was, you know, that's always on the on the table, right? Now this Gibble's going to have a track. I'm like, oh no, this is very, very bad. So Munchax is going to be falling in love here, which is uh, which is not good. And I got to mobilize my love. I'm like, man, this is really bad. And then it uses sand attack. I'm like, this, this is a nightmare, right? Because I've already got, uh, I've got infatuation and I've got mega kick, which is very dodgy and accuracy, right? So Munchax is going to be fast asleep here. I was like, uh, like, I was getting really doubtful with, even if I got the move, right? So go for the sleep talk, mega kick lands. It lands after a sand attack and gets through the infatuation and takes the gibble out. Wow, that was that was actually very, very lucky when you think about it. All the things had to line up. Next Pokemon is the Gibble. It's only got a little bit of health here, and now it's going to go for an Earthquake. They really need to get a crit. Um, it does pretty good damage to Earthquake. It's about a 4 to 5 PK. I'm going to wake up, and I'm going to get that Mega Kick to land again, and Gibble is going to go down. Man. That, uh, that Munchax was very, very lucky in the end. Uh, thank you for the battle check. It was a very cool team there. It was like, it was almost like babies versus babies, I guess. Okay, let's get on to battle number two. And once again, people, if you do enjoy these videos, please drop a like on them. If you're liking the theme teams and the Sword and Shield content, let me know in the comment section. And let's get on to battle number two. This is the battle against Duke, and we got a shift tree leap. I think that's a, uh, that might be a... German name for shift tree? I'm pretty sure it is. I'm very, very sure Tengu is a uh, a German name for it. Anyway, I went for the fake out, right? But the shift tree's got a red card, so I was like, oh, my poor Tyrogue. So he didn't get, uh, you know, some. It got, it was trying to get the flame all up, but it didn't work out, right? So going to Bonsai here, because I'm sort of forced to, and now the shift tree's going to go for a leaf tornado. Leaf tornado is going to take me all the way down to my sturdy, which is good. And I've got the custard bray, and that's actually going to drop my accuracy. I'm like, oh no. Counter's going to fail here too, so I was hoping it would be a physical set. So, what I'm going to do, right, I'm going to go for Explosion. It's my really only way here. The Shift Tree swaps out, and I'm thinking, oh no, what's going to come in here? And the Silicopra is going to come in here. I'm not sure if this is if that's a uh, another name for Silicopra too. Once again, if you see a theme team, let me know. So, go for the Explosion here. I was hoping that it didn't miss, because remember I had that Axe drop, and it didn't happen. But man, that Silicopra was thick, right? So, my Bonds Light is down. It's a disaster at the moment. I'll be real with you. It's sort of like last battle too, because that was a disaster at the start too. A poor little Tyrogue. Speaking of which, uh, here's our star here. We're going to swap in Tyrogue again. Now, this time, I can clap the Silicopra's cheeks here and get my uh, Flame all up, at least. So, I'm going to take a little bit of Sandstorm damage here, which is fine. And I'm thinking, well, I I've got more than enough uh, Firepower now to take it out with Hydro Kick. It's going to outspeed me and use Mud Slap. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, please. And it missed again. <laughs> this Tyro cannot catch a break. So I'm going to hit by the Sandstorm. And I'm like, well, this is very, very bad. Because what's the point of me swapping out now? I'm going to take uh, extra damage here. So I was like, let's see if it's got any other moose in uh, Mud Slap. And it had Earthquake. And Tyro gets absolutely piled on for the second battle in a row. Can we get some Fs in the comment section for Tyro? Or... It's, it's got to be a mention of Tyrogue in the comment section, right? So the next Pokemon is going to be the Mantike. I was like, you know what? I'm sick of this sand, you know? It, it's, it's coarse and it gets everywhere. So uh, setting that Rain Dance up, right? We're going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to take the Silicopter out with a Hydro Pump. Because i, I got to turn this match around, right? So it's going to go for a Brutal Swing. That actually looked really cool coming from Silicopter. I don't know. It sort of looked like uh, it's sort of snaked around. And now Silicopter is going to set the Sandstorm up itself. So we're having a little bit of a, a weather war at the moment. So we have the sand, the rain, and the sand. You know, I'm trying to make it rain and the silicopter is trying to make it all sandy and stuff like that okay so i like well let's get the rain dance up again uh i get that rain dance up and then hit it as hard as i can with a hydro pump it's definitly not going to be able to uh lift that so we had mud slap and earthquake and brutal swing it was a it was an interesting set so mantike's defense isn't the greatest in the world plus i'm not carrying everlight or anything like that so i'm running more of a sweeping one so i'm taking a little bit more damage than i wanted there Finally, the Sinner Copper is going to go down, but it's, it's a villain. He's going to set the sand up again. I'm sick of this sand. Come on. So the sand spits up again. I could go for Rain Dance on the next Pokemon, but I want to see what's going to come out for us. It might be better off just firing off one of my attacks, right? Our next Pokemon to come is going to be the uh, Swoobat. Now, watch. This is really interesting. So, like, you know what? What I'm going to do here, I'm going to go for a Max Geyser. Hopefully, I can tank the attack from Swoobat. I was worried about one move if it had Charge Beam. Because that could be... I know it's quite specific, but 
if it did have it, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. And this is very, very interesting. So go for the Dynamax Mantai here. That's a very, very big uh, little Manta Ray there. I think it's a... No, it's a Stingray, not a Manta Ray. Manta Rays are like more like Mantai. So uh, anyway, back to the battle. I'm going to get some nice juicy health here. I know that I can leave a special attack. Swoobat goes for Imprison. Now, apparently, the Swoobat had Air Slash. It had Air Slash. So I was like, wow, that's, so, that's super situational. And uh, my attack is going to do a lot of damage and take the Swoobat out. But they got an Imprison off there to stop me using Air Slash, which is really, really funny. Like, it's, it's quite... Um, I guess it's quite situational that both Pokemon on the field would have the Air Slash and one Pokemon would have Imprison too. So I was like, man, can I use Max Airstream here? And I could. I was like, okay, so the move Air Splash I couldn't use with Imprison, but um, I already fainted, I guess. So that was really, really interesting. And obviously it's using a, uh, um, a, a Max move as well. So I guess that would have been another um, a name for it too. But that was really, really cool how both of them had... Uh, the same move there. So next Pokemon is going to be Hydreigon. I was like, okay, this is going to be the Dynamax Pokemon. I had a feeling. Now, I've got no idea what sort of set this is going to be. There's been some uh, sort of out there sets already. We have an Imprisoned Swoobat, a Mudslap. <laughs> Mudslap. I'm not even talking about that Silicopra. Poor Tyrogue. It's, cry it's crying right. It's, it's inside its egg in a shell. You know what it did, right? It jumped back in its egg. It got the top of its shell and just put it on. It, 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 it sweat back into an egg. You know what I'm saying? So go for the S-Slash here. I want to see if I can outspeed this. I do have the Swift Swim, so I'm still outspeeding it, but I'm worried once the rain ends, I might not be able to outspeed. So Hydreigon's going to go for a max darkness. I don't know what sort of dark time move. Mostly it's got Dank Pulse, right? And that's going to be enough to take out Mantai. But I don't know whether that's going to be that or not, you know? Now I'm thinking here, well, Mime could come in here and tank a Dark Pulse very, very easily and then put it to sleep, you know? I can't do Dream Eater, but at least I can put the Trick Room up here, right? So I feel like I can easily live this. They withdrew their High Dragon. I'm like, what? Damn, I didn't, I, I have to admit, I never expected a withdraw there. Now, with the next Pokemon to come out here against this is going to be Meowth. I was like, okay, Meowth. I went for Trick Room here because I wanted to get some speed control against High Dragon because the rest of my team... Uh, let's face it, aren't really fast. Now, uh, Meowth's going to go for the fake out there, clapping my Mime Jr.'s cheeks and getting a nice little critical hit there. So it's going to flinch me, and I'm thinking here, maybe I can get a Hypnosis off. And it lands again, like, this is really, really good. I actually had a lot of luck with my Mime Jr., but not... Well, I had zero luck with Tyrogue, so I guess I sort of counterbalance these other, you know what I'm saying? So Meowth's going to be asleep. I'm going to pop a Dream Man, not even going to go for a nasty plot. And since Meowth is not exactly what one would call bulky, I one-shot that and I get all the health back that it did to me with the Fake Out. So this is excellent at the moment. Like, doing some really, really good damage. Now, the next Pokemon I want to come in is going to be the High Dragon. So like, okay, what is this set actually going to be? So if Hypnosis is going to miss, right? Now, High Dragon is a physical set. It's got double hits. So I'm like, okay. Okay, I'm not going to take the... I mean, I've got the uh, Everlight, right? But if I didn't have Everlight, that would have been doing, like, way more damage. So, like, wonder what the Dark move is, like... So the Twisted Dimension is going to return to normal. It's a mix set. It's got double hit and try attack. It's like a full-on troll set. Maybe it's got King's Rock or Razor Fang or something like that. Unfortunately, the Hypnosis missed again. Here comes another try attack from the uh, High Dragon. I'm tanking these attacks really, really well too. Hypnosis finally lands. But the thing about it, right, I can't go for Dream Eater. I sort of wanted to have uh, Trick and Ring target on this set, but... One, that would have taken away the Everlight, which would have, you know, absolutely disintegrated my bulk. And I ran out of moves too. I sort of had a uh, five-slot syndrome there. So I thought the best play here is to set the Tricker up and set my other Pokemon up. And I might be able to make use of the Mime Jr. later, whether it be to take a Pokemon or just swap it in as a, a Meat Shield. So going to Why Not here, we got the Hydrogen waking up, go for a try attack I want to see what that Dark move is. Like, um, I thought I might be able to bait it out. So try attack is going to burn me there. They finally got some RNG on that. I've got Destiny Bond here, so I might be able to see if I can get this to work. So the Dragon move here was going to be Scale Shot, and it was a physical set. I, I popped a counter, and the, the bad thing about using counter on a multi-hitting move, it'll actually take the damage from the like one hit. It won't take the collective damage of all the hits. So whether that, that did a lot of damage to me, but in this case, it's only going to do a little bit of damage, which is very unfortunate. So anyway, why not? It's going to take some more bird damage. I'm on four health here. I was like, perfect. This is absolutely perfect. So go for the Destiny Bond, out speeding under the Trick Ring, which is actually allowed uh, to set up from my Mime Jr. And double hit is going to take me out. I'm, I was like, I was actually expecting double hit to miss there and me die to the burn. That would have been tragic. So Hydreigon is going to go down. Like, there's a really weird set. It's like a completely like mixed set. 
uh, which is interesting. So last Pokemon I've got is a uh, Munchax, of, of course, aside from the Mime Jr. And I can set up here. Now, the last Pokemon they've got is going to be a Lombre. So you don't really get to see Lombre very much. So some interesting Pokemon on the team. Um, I'm going to waste no time here and go for a Curse because I'm going to make use of that. Now, Lombre, I, I, was, I was thinking, is it going to be an Everlight set? I feel like one Curse should be enough. Now the Lombre goes for Whirlpool. Like, well, Whirlpool's more of a move you'd use on a, a support or tanky sort of style set, right? So maybe this thing is, like, bulky. I don't really know. So the Trick Room's going to run out, and now it's going to go for Skull. Now, Skull could burn me, which might force me to rest here. Mega Kick is going to connect, but look at the damage it did. It was pretty good, but it didn't even have Everlight. So this thing is, like, super bulky for a Lombre, right? Um, I had plus one there and stab two and you know mega kicks big uh, 120 base power So I'm gonna take some more damage from the whirlpool The only thing I was worried about here was a skull burn, but it wasn't doing a lot of damage to me So mega kick is gonna miss this time and whirlpool, you know is starting to do a fair bit of damage to me And if I miss too many times the lombre may be able to live another mega kick plus mega kick only has a certain amount of PP too So I gotta make sure I leave one left on the sleep talk, if it gets to that, right? So here comes another score from the Lombre, and indeed they do burn me. I was like, okay, I wonder if this is gonna take it, I'm doubtful. So here comes the Mega Kick, nah, no way, nowhere near. They could probably live another one after this. I'm like, I've got no choice, I have to use rest here. I can't swap in my Mime Junior, it's got too little amount of health left. Maybe I could swap it in when the Whirlpool runs out. Maybe they'll miss. You know, Whirlpool's accuracy is a little bit shaky, but let's see. So we're on down to a little bit of health here and no crit, thank goodness. And Munchak just gets the rest off there. It was very, very close. Like, I'm very glad that I was running max special defense because I wouldn't be taking those scolds, you know, as well, I mean, well as I would, right? So here comes the Ubella. Big health recovery there on Munchak. I'm pretty good to go here. What I need to do to beat this thing, I need to be able to take it out in one shot or a big hit, right? So I need a lot of curses. I thought, I think they're going to whirlpool me. Let's try this. I might be able to hypnosis them with Mime Jr. It's a risky play, but I feel like I've got nothing to lose here. So here comes the Lombre, and it's going to land the whirlpool, unfortunately, on the Mime. Now, I do tank that just due to my bulky uh, Mime Jr., but I'm going to probably get out spared uh, because this is a quiet nature and zero IV. So it's made for trick room, you know? So I lived on three health. It was very, very close, and now the Lombre is going to go for Scald and take me out. It was worth a try there. It was okay. I mean, I did get rid of one of my uh, curses on Munchax, but I feel like I can still set those up, and I'm still asleep, so it's not like it can scold me or anything like that. I just need to hit it with one Mega Kick. That's it. One really, really powerful Mega Kick before my... Uh, you know, PP runs out. So uh, the, the, the advantage here is they're not doing a lot of damage. Scald and Whirlpool are not doing much. Like over time, a fair bit, but I can still go to sleep. So we've got three minutes left in this battle here. I have to get a couple of Cursed up and I get a Mega Kick straight off the battle. It's like, okay, that's pretty good. And it doesn't take it out, but boy, it gets close. So only one Mega Kick to take this thing out. Um, I actually probably don't need a Curse here. I'd actually need an attacking move. So Lombre is going to set that Whirlpool up. It's funny how it missed that turn before, but it didn't miss on the Mime. But uh, you know, that's how the game is sometimes, right? So go for Sleep Talk on the Munchax. Two minutes of the battle left. We're getting very, very close to the uh, the dreaded 20-minute timer. Here we go again, people. And I get a, a curse. I'm like, okay, the next Mega Kick that lands on Lombre is definitely going to take it out. Like, I've got it low enough. So next turn, I am going to wake up because I have been asleep for two turns. Uh, Lombre is going to need, a, you know, it's going to need at least half or a little bit more than its health to actually withstand another Mega Kick. Or I have, like, I might miss a few. That's what I was worried about missing. So here comes another Skull here, and that's not going to burn me because I'm asleep. But the next turn after this, I could get burned. Mega Kick is going to miss, and Lombre's, Lombre's best play is to keep spamming Skull over and over and forcing me to rest and run out of PP, right? But I'm definitely not going to allow um, the last move to be used here. I have to, like, have one remaining, so that way I can keep using Sleep Talk, right? And uh, here comes another Scold. 60 seconds left of the battle. Mega Kick is going to miss again. Oh, no. So at this stage, I think I've got like two or three Mega Kicks left. It's pretty like, uh, it's pretty close here. And Munchak's once again, is like uh, half help. Scold is going to land this time. I was really worried about a burn here on my Munchak. And I didn't get burned. And Mega Kick is going to connect with 30 seconds left of the battle. And finally, that dang Lombre goes down. That was so close. Thank you for the battle and hope you enjoyed both these. Drop a like if you enjoyed it and I'll catch you tomorrow for another video. Peace out.